legends in music. Play your kui, Dumbra, play. Spill your miraculous chants like a mountain stream. Bring joy to my heart. Customs and rituals, folk games or festivals, all of these things were reflected in the music. It is not for nothing that the traditions of poetic competitions became the basis of the life of the Kazakh people. These treasures of oral literature were created and passed down from generation to generation by talented akuns, jiraos, singers, and improvisers. How many of you can tell us about your experiences, philosophical reflections, your joys and sadness? But we stop to delve into this amazing music and cannot always understand its meaning. So what is a kuishi playing about? The people's memories kept the history of the kui, and usually there are several interpretations and we will tell you about one of them. Understanding the meaning of a kui will allow us to feel deeply this beautiful original creation. Jigit was riding on his horse, and one could not pay any attention to him, if not for his face, which shone with such light and tenderness. His brown eyes glittered from under a thick brow, and a smile was frozen on his lips. Kazangap's soul was light and joyful. He recalls the girl Baljan. At the very thought of her, his heart trembled in his chest like a caught bird and a blush covered his swarthy cheeks. When Kazangap thought about meeting with Baljan, he plunged into a sweet languor, and it seemed to him that everything around him was becoming somehow different. And for some reason, the ordinary bushes of thorns seemed to him so bright and beautiful, and the grassy steppe exuded such sweet aroma as if it was a blush of flowering roses and his hand seemed to touch the strings of a dumbra, as if touching melody, sunny and tender, the same one that played in his soul. At times it even seemed that he could hear the step singing quietly to him. Once he saw her at a party and was fascinated by her beauty, although she was only 15 years old at the time. Since then, all of his thoughts had been only about her alone. Kazangap's love was pure and sublime. He admired not only her fair beauty, but also her talents. Few girls could compare with her in playing the Dumbra and her voice was incredibly tender and deep, and her sharp and inquisitive mind was appreciated even by the glorified Akins. For two years, Kazangap did not see the beautiful Baljan, but he carefully preserved her image in his memory and dedicated his kuis to her. A joyful message spread across the villages that the noble Bai Wali arranged a big holiday with a song competition. Many Akins hearing about it gathered to travel. There was a fuss in the village, as if the white steppe mushrooms appeared in the yurt, covered with white felt. These yurts were put up by residents of the Aul for their guests, on the orders of the Bai himself. The women hastily planted bonfires and put smoky deep cauldrons on them. The fat was hissing, and the sides of the glorious round bower socks were becoming golden. Finally, all those who wanted to come had arrived in the village, 
and among them there was a Jagit called Kazangap. He again came to the village to see his Baljan. Many Dumbra players' hearts trembled for the upcoming Aitus, because a glorious Bai, Wali, will give his best stallion to the one who wins the match. But no one could even guess what was happening in the heart of Kazangap. After all, he came here not for the sake of the competition and for the generous prize, but he was brought here by love itself, pure and sublime. Kazangat sat by his yurt, and his heart beat with happiness, because soon he would see his Baljan. He quietly touched the strings, and his soul sang along with the Dumbra about his deep and pure love. Kazangap was so absorbed by his thoughts that he didn't notice what was happening around him. The stormy argument of two Jagits distracted him from his thoughts, and he turned to their loud voices. Kazangap knew them both. One was Asulbek with his arrogant and quick temper, and he was a good Kuishi and was very proud of that fact. Another was a young man named Nurkasum. He was famous for his beauty and his ability to extract from the Dumbra the soft and sweet sounds. It's not for nothing that in his Aul he was called sweet-sounding Kuishi. The Jigits were jumping up and chuckling at each other, cheering people that gathered around them. <laughs> Anyone who defeats me in the Aitus must be a skillful Kuishi, Asselbeck shouted, so that people would hear his playing on the Dumbra and not stare at his face that would suit a girl. When my left hand slides freely over the handle of my Dumbra, and the fingers of my right hand strike the strings, and then my sweet-sounding Dumbra will scream. Then no one will care for my face, Nurkasim replied, laughing, giving everyone his beautiful smile. Ha ha, you're right, Asselbeck exclaimed. But for your sweetness, only the hearts of girls will flare up, because they listen not with their mind, but with their hearts. Yes, Asselbeck, Beauty is not given to many. People like you even touch the strings so sweepingly and strongly that it's like you're knocking the dust out of a blanket. The men burst out laughing, watching the exchange of the two musicians. Asselbeck flared up and almost rushed with fists at the arrogant Nurkasum. Do not judge my technique. It's not for you. This is how my ancestors used to play. This is the real game, not how you pinch the strings like a woman who's searching for sheep's wool. Kazangop came close to the arguing musicians and closely watched their argument. Suddenly, he struck the strings, and everyone heard the Dombra singing with resentment and pain. Everyone fell silent and looked at each other in bewilderment. But Kazangop continued to play in complete silence, and the Dumbra was singing about a quiet Jailau with peaceful grazing herds, about a quiet summer evening, about the steppe wind and moon, which rises at night, changing its place with the sun, about the house and the mother who quietly sings a lullaby. Kazangop stopped playing and said, why do you argue about the technique? You offend only the Dumbra. After all, the Dumbra is the soul of the Yakun. Everyone somehow felt ashamed and embarrassed. Kazangap looked around the crowd and suddenly stopped. He was burned from the sight of the big black eyes. Baljan looked at Kazangap and she gave him her radiant smile and at the same moment, she disappeared like a vision. With rapid steps, Baljan returned to her yurt, and crossing the threshold, she saw her father sitting behind fragrant tea. She rushed to him and laughed gaily. She covered her mouth with the sleeves of her dress. What is the reason for your smile, my Baljan? Wali asked affectionately of his daughter, whom he loved with his entire soul. Father, there were two young akins arguing about whose technique of playing Dumbra was better, and the Jigid Kazangap shamed everyone. 
I want tomorrow to come as soon as possible, and then we will understand who is the best, the beautiful Baljan said, smiling. Yes, answered the Bai. The Almighty will support the one whose music comes from the heart. And I... But he didn't finish his thought. A fresh wind blew from the mountains, and the soft pink sun rose in the sky. The early morning was surprisingly beautiful. The women went with buckets to the river for water, and the Aul was waking up. By noon, near the Bai's yurt, their felt carpets had been spread, and tea was boiling in some of ours. The fragrant bowersock and sweets were stacked in large dishes. After the Itis, there was a big reception in honor of the winner, and now everyone was seated, waiting for exciting presentations. On the richly embroidered carpet, in the very center sat the Bai Uali, and around him the respected Aksakals. And then the Akuns arrived, along with the Zershis and the Kuishis, and they settled around and waited for their time. The people rejoiced how many virtuistic musicians performed before them, and each one was better than the last. Victory in this Itus will bring some fame and respect. By the end of the Itus, Wali from all the musicians singled out three Kuishis, handsome Nurkasim, Kazangap, and Asilbek. Now they will challenge each other among themselves. Wali rose from his pillow, waved his hands, and when silence reigned, he solemnly said, According to the old traditions, a song or kui is given to the hospitable hosts for memory. So as a master, I want each of you to play about my treasure. The one who will guess exactly what it is, I will give the fastest stallion. The kui she is nodded happily. Asselbeck was the first one to sweep across the Dumbra strings. A rhythmic, brisk melody flew across the valley. Everyone heard the trampling of hooves and numerous horses, and the neighing of strong and slender stallions. Like a jailao with juicy grass and fast rivers, there appeared before their eyes. Fat sheep scattered all over the valley, and their silent bleeding was heard. The rest and peace was in the village when Uaili was in command. When Asselbeck finished playing, the Bai broke into a satisfied smile and said, I heard about my treasure, about my herds and my fat flock and sheep, about the prosperity and wealth. Have I correctly understood your kui? Yes, he answered, smiling. That's right. Correcting his hat, trimmed with fur, Nur Qasim took his dumbra. He looked around at the listeners and the cheeks of many young girls, flushed from such daring and incredible beauty. Nur Qasim gently touched the strings of his dumbra, and he sang so touchingly and tenderly, telling everyone about the generosity of the Bai Uali, about his warm and kind heart, about how he helps the poor and gives them bread and mares so that they can drink fresh kumus and feed their children with hot cakes, that any wandering musician will find here a worthy welcome and respect. The fact that his Itis holidays are famous throughout the steppe and everyone dreams of visiting his party. It was sweetly sung by the Dumbra, and when the Kuishi finished his performance, he saw that the Bai's eyes glittered with happiness. You have touched me, Nurkasim, said Uali. I only told the truth about your kind heart and the generosity that you possess to all. Your treasure is in yourself, the Kuishi smiled, adding. Baljan fixed her gaze on Kazangap when his turn would come. Her heart was agitated, and she wished him victory with all her heart. He ran his fingers through the strings and began to play a piercing story of his love for the most beautiful girl in the world, the beautiful Baljan. Music flowed like honey, touching, tender, and surprisingly beautiful, and all knew in an instant about whom Kazangap sang his song. 
When Kazangop's Dumbra fell silent, he looked down. Tears stiffened in the eyes of the Bai Uali, but he blinked and with a firm voice he asked, Have you played this kui about my daughter? Yes, Kazangop replied, but I did not play about her as a future groom. I know that I cannot even dream about it, as my family is not as famous as yours. I just worship her as I worship the moon or sun. After all, your daughter is the most beautiful girl that ever walked on our land. The Bai smiled and exclaimed, You have guessed right, Kazangop. My daughter is my treasure. I give you the fastest stallion. Even the wind cannot catch up with it. The glory of you will spread throughout all of the steppe. You deserve to be a glorified Kuishi. He remembered her, the most beautiful and amazing girl, Baljan, about the one that he will carry in his heart his whole life. Creativity of Kazangap Tlipirgenov is not only the monument of Kazakh folk culture, it also serves as an eternally living source from which new generations of musicians and performers of Kazakhstan will draw their inspiration.